The X, we prefer to see those bubbles filled in. So as you audit your pledge cards, we don't really want to see X's or check marks. Um, we prefer to see the bubble filled in. We want to make sure that the donor's wishes are honored. Um, so the X or the check mark would be inappropriate because the, the pledge cards go through a mapping and scanning process. And during that process, the system is looking for a bubble filled in, not an X or a check mark. So as you're auditing the pledge cards, you'll want to make sure that those bubbles are filled in. Those bubbles are filled in. Any questions about the blank pledge form? It's pretty similar to the personalized pledge form. So we talked a bit about the leadership level program. Um, Janine Tool, she processes those leadership level gifts and she makes sure that you all get the information or the, the tools or the resources you need um, in terms of the spreadsheet, the tracking spreadsheet, the actual um, items. She makes sure the campaign liaisons get those. So she's going to talk to you a little bit more about, where did we get that? oh, let me back up, I'm sorry. And I need to. Um, so we have, we have three pledge forms. We have the, pre the personalized pledge form, we have the blank pledge form, and then we have our special event pledge form. We talked about those Coney sales, bake sales, whatever you decide to do in terms of raising dollars for special events. On this pledge form, um, you'll want to put in your state agency, your work location. Work location is the first four letters of the county where the special event took place. So if your office is right here in Columbus, but the special event took place for ODOT somewhere in Cleveland, then you'll want to make sure that this says CUIA for Cuyahoga County. We, we want to make sure that we have the appropriate work location under the state agency so that we'll be able to tell you what counties raised or generated the most money. So if you call me from, um, I'll use ODOT, and you say, well, how much money did ODOT raise in special events in Cuyahoga County? I'll be able to give you that information. I'll be able to give you that information. Um, again, special events dollars, are de you, you are able to designate those. It's just very important that as you're holding these special events, you let donors know what organizations are going to be receiving these funds. Because you may have a donor that doesn't, they may not want their, believe it, it happens, that dollar for that county, they don't want it going to ABC organization. It happens. It will happen. So you want to make sure that somewhere um, during that event on a poster board or however you choose to, to, um, to display it, you say these dollars are being raised, generated for one, two, three organizations. Again, a five-digit code. And this is going to be a check also, so you're going to want to convert. And we'll talk a little bit about how you go about converting your cash to check. Charity code, the total gift. And then print the coordinate. We have a special event name. We need to know exactly what you did in terms of the special event. Was it um, a bake sale? Was it a county sale? Um, and when you're, when you're conducting special events, it is imperative, imperative, that you check with your legal ethics office, you check with the leadership in your agency, it is imperative. I'm not gonna say you can do this or you can do that because you will not go back to your director and say, I was at that training and Samira said we could do that. Uh -uh. No. So it's just, it's really important that you check with your agency leadership. Check with leadership and check with your ethics, legal, whatever that department is, before moving forward with any special event. I don't want you all to get in trouble and I don't want anyone, you know, I don't want the campaign to be tarnished by something that, and, and you don't do it purposefully. It's just something that maybe you didn't know. So always check. And we'll want to know the special event name and it was held on what day. And then you're going to print your name, phone number with area code in case we have any questions back at our office, and again the date. And, and later on, um, when we get our tenured coordinators in at the end of all coordinator training, they're going to share some of the special events that they've had. Some have been successful, some have not been so successful, but they're going to share that information with you. Any questions about special events? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
if you're raising money for the same charities, if you do a county sale, a bake sale, and um, thank you, a pizza sale, if you're raising money for the same three charities, no. If you're gonna sit, if you're raising money for three sets of three different sets of charities, then yeah, you want to have a, a different form. Any other questions? And you can get really, really creative, but I will say it again. And Bill, please make sure we're taping this portion. Check with your ethics office and your legal department and your leadership. I hope you tape that. Maddie can tape. Okay, with that said, um, Janine Toole, our campaign associate, she is going to talk to you about our leadership um, program, our leadership giving program, and how um, you are to track those leadership level gifts in terms of making sure donors get their leadership level um, gifts and how to use this particular spreadsheet. Good morning. Okay, by now I've probably spoken with most of you by phone or email. If not, I will be soon. You get to know me very well. Um, I'm supposed to talk to you about this uh, donor recognition leadership tracking form. I'm going to try to take some of the guesswork out of completing it. This form is used to track leadership level donors that will be listed on the website next year and it processes the donor recognition items. The original blank Excel spreadsheet, which is what this is, will be emailed to the main coordinators by me. Um, this, please complete this they, in Excel spreadsheet, in Excel format. Don't handwrite it. If you handwrite it and turn it in in paper, then I have to retype it. And if I can't read your handwriting, then I have to guess. And that just causes errors in people's names, um, donor levels. So if, if at all possible, if you have Excel, please turn it back in in Excel format. If not, get in touch with me and we'll see what we can work out. Um, let's see. Every employee, uh, you can't see this, the, a sample of the form is on page 36 in your manual. The information to complete this form comes from the completed pledge forms. So anything that you put on this form can be found on a pledge form. So when you get your forms and you're getting ready to put them in the, in the report envelope, best time to do it is before you put it in the envelope, fill this form out if I can figure out how to work this thing. Hey, there we go. Every employee who donates at $5 per pay or the equivalent what gets listed on here. So I'll put a couple of them up here. The agency name is the overall agency, like transportation, mental health, rehabilitation and correction. It is the larger overall agency name. Department location, that is your district, your area. Like in this instance, transportation, District 10, District 12, your facility, especially if you're a statewide location. This comes into play when we try to distribute the, the thank you gifts. If you provide, if you just say, hey, I'm on transportation, and you give us a list of 100 names, we're going to give you a bag of 100 gifts. If you give us a, a name, a list, and you say, okay, 10 of these are at District 10, 10 of these are at District 12, then we can give you two bags and the gifts will be separated. Makes it much easier for you to distribute and for us to keep track of it. It helps all along the way for everybody. And we're, we're not trying to make more work, but it hopefully in the long run makes it easier all, all the way through for everybody. Um, if you look, we, we, so you're going to fill in the agency name, the department location, the person's last name and first name. The next column says did they pay five dollars, ten dollars, the next one is twenty. I mean it just follows through and you just put an X. You just mark. The, the purple, the two back columns, last columns, are does the donor want to be anonymous and do they not want a gift? Those are very important. Several coordinators over the years have said, oh, well, they don't want a gift or they want to be anonymous. I'm not going to list them on the form. 
you can do that, it's not recommended because you have no way of tracking then whether the person did. And if they come back and say, hey, why didn't I get a gift? It's a lot of legwork trying to figure out why they didn't get a gift. If you put it down, then we know. It, it, it's a very good tracking sheet. That way I know if they call me and say, hey, why didn't I get a gift? I can say, your pledge form said, you, the coordinator said you didn't want a gift. Those two columns are found at the bottom of the pledge form. Remember at the very bottom right by the name, there's the box that said donor options. Those two little things right over there. Just, just mark those two boxes. Um, when you're done, just email the form back into me. We'll process them regularly. If you send it in to me uh, every week, depending on how many names you have, if you're a larger agency, every week, every other week, we'll process them as you turn them in. If you're a small agency or commission, you probably only want to turn it in once because you're not going to have that many names to process. It's up to you. Um, please don't submit the same name twice. <laughs> Any questions? Did I hit most? Yes. Her question is, if they, if they participate in several different events do you, and they pay $2 here and $5 here, do you try to track and know? This is for pledge forms. The, this is for pledge forms, say they, they fill out a pledge form and they say, if, whether it's one time or a payroll, if they give it a $5 or ab above level per pay. I mean, it, it's too much to ask you to say, okay, they paid $5 here and they paid $10 here for a special event, they bought a Coney here. It, it's almost never going to add up to a $5 per payer above level. Um, so no, you don't have to do that. Any other questions on the, the form? Yes. Yeah, that, that doesn't constitute a one-time gift because, I mean, if you're doing a pledge form, you're putting down that you're, you're, you're giving a one-time gift is so much. I mean, if um, it, just because they're participating in five different events, they're not filling out a pledge form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But see, the auction is a special event. The auction is considered, anything you spend at an auction is a special event, and that goes into special events, and that usually does not include payroll, ple payroll or, or pledge forms. It can, but usually doesn't. That would be something you'd want to talk to um, the coordinator or Tamara afterwards, and that would be a, something we'd have to discuss and see logistically. It's not an across-the-board answer. We'd have to look at it a little closer. Yes. During the campaign, right, that's when we're trying. Right, under $5 per pay, we don't give a thing, we don't, they don't get the donor recognition item and they don't get, um, they're not at a leadership, what the, the campaign considers leadership level, so we don't track them on this. Exactly. I mean, you can add a column if you want and track so that you can use it to track all your pledges if you want to, but we don't use it for the donor, donor recognition or leadership tracking, no.
Any other questions? Okay, and I will be emailing this out to the main coordinators. And during the campaign, if you have questions, my email's on it, my phone number, call me. Okay, here is a sample representative of what our donor recognition items are gonna be this year. The committee is still working on it. Um, it's a work in progress this year, so we will have samples later. We're looking at a pad folio and an ink pen. So, okay, yes. Yeah, it's right. It's five dollars per pay or the equivalent one-time gift. So if they give a one-time gift on here, it's it's five dollars per pay, which is one hundred and thirty dollars, or they can give a, a check, one-time cash check. Well, it has to be turned into a check, but one-time payment of one hundred and thirty dollars or above. It doesn't. We don't. We're not particular which whatever way. I mean, if they want to write a check for one hundred and thirty dollars or more. They want to do payroll deduction, which is much easier. Um, they can they can do it whichever way they, they a donor chooses to to participate in the campaign. They would work on this. Good question. Okay. Back to you, Mayor. Thanks, Janine. And one thing we um, we, we didn't we didn't kind of mention historically. We know what these items are going to be. We know what the leadership level items are going to be. And the reason why uh, we're, we're kind of delayed in knowing for sure what they're going to be is because we want to make sure that they're made in the USA. And so um, it's kind of difficult to get quite, uh, I don't want to say that. We want to make sure they're made in the USA. But we will definitely have them for you. Um, and they'll be available, and they will be made in the USA because that's a question you will definitely get. The committee is very um, steadfast, as am I, on making sure these items are made um, in the USA and that they're quality items made in the USA because th because that is a question you'll get. Well, why, are these items made in the USA or are they made in China? Um, we get those questions all the time. So FYI, just for, um, for you all so that you know that. Um, so we talked about the pledge cards. We talked about special event pledge cards. Now, once you have your pledge cards audited, um, you know that your, your numbers are correct. These are the envelopes that you're actually going to use. I thought we actually had a sample of the actual envelope. Ah, we do. This is just the cover of the envelope, but this is what the actual envelope looks like. With the actual, and you'll get a supply of these when you get your campaign supplies. When your campaign, when you set up a time or you coordinate a schedule for your campaign liaison to drop off your supplies, um, you're going to get um, a supply of campaign report envelopes. And so all of your pledge cards, special event pledges, will go into this envelope. How many people have worked on the campaign before and actually completed this envelope? You will be happy to know that you no longer have to separate new or blank pledge forms from the personalized pledge forms. We were able to do away with that requirement because I'm sure if you've done the envelopes before, you remember having to go through and put those in separate envelopes. No longer the case. However, the maximum number of pledge cards that can be in an envelope is 100, and that's for processing, to keep our processing costs as low as possible. So you no longer have to separate them. And for those of you that have never done an envelope, you're just, you picked up the campaign prime time. Because in the past, the coordinators had to actually separate the blank pledge forms, the personalized pledge forms, and actually in the past it was even deeper than that, but I won't go back that far, um, and put them in separate envelopes. So that's no longer the case. We made the, we made the pledge forms as similar as possible for processing purposes, and you don't have to do that anymore. So there you go. That's your gift for the day. Um, so after you have all of your pledge cards audited, um, you're going to complete the front of your campaign report envelope, and we're going to kind of walk through this. And if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, you may or may not have your account number. Um, if you don't have that, your campaign liaison will have it. That's not a necessity in terms of completing this because your campaign liaison is going to have that information anyway. 
but you want to obviously in section one, transportation, your agency, just as Janine talked about with the leadership level tracking form, you want to make sure you have your district 10, your facility, department, whatever that may be, we want to complete that on the front of the campaign report envelope. Your address, city, state, zip. What county? So if it's Franklin County, Cuyahoga County, any other county, you can check that third box. Um, statewide, all other 80, 86 counties. But if it's Franklin or Cuyahoga, we like to know that. Um, we like to know, we like to have that information. Is this your final campaign report envelope? Usually that'll be, I'm, I always hope that it's no, because I'm hoping that you're still collecting money. Um, but you want to let us know if it is. If you're absolutely positive that this is your final campaign report envelope, then you definitely want to say yes so that we can log that in our records. And just because you say yes on this campaign report envelope, we do not turn away pledges. <laughs> We don't turn away pledges. So if you say, oh, nope, I turned in my final envelope. It's a wrap. You can't, I don't want you, I'm not taking your pledge. The final envelope already went in. No, no. You can complete another envelope and send it in to us. Yes, ma'am. The, que no, no, no. Um, the question is, um, if we have other pledges, are pledges coming in from other counties, um, like Cal I mean, like Summit, Warren, Clark, can we put all of those in the same envelope? We, do we don't have to separate those out, right? No, you do not. You don't have to sep separate them out. You can put those in the same envelope. And you would just check statewide all, all other 86 counties it's not a necessity that you separate out Franklin Cuyahoga County. It's not a necessity anymore. We want to make it as easy as possible for you. Uh, we don't want you spending a lot of time taking out Franklin County pledges, Cuyahoga pledges, and other. Um, if that's something you need to do for your records, that's fine, but it's not a necessity for our records. It's just kind of there if you choose to do it, so to speak. But if doing it takes up too much of your time, Please don't. Please don't. Um, and then we have total number of employees in your agency. This is imperative that we have the right number. We talked about those participation numbers, participation percentages. Your, um, your FTE, full-time employee count, may go up or down throughout the campaign. We need to know what your full-time employee count is at the time you submit your envelope. Uh, we need to know. So that's, it's imperative that we have that number, imperative. Because if it, if it updates, then we're going to update our records. And again, we don't want your direct, I'm sorry, yes. Full-time only. Um, your part-time, seasonal, intermittent, um, they can't do payroll deduction, and I'm gonna I'm gonna defer. Okay, it's, it's that's on what, Brenda? I'm sorry. So the question is, does the campaign include intermittent, part time, seasonal? Okay. Okay. It, Part-time permanent can, so they can participate in the campaign. And you're saying if they're under warrant of the auditor? Okay. Okay, so everyone that's paid. Right. Okay. So as long as they're paid by the state of Ohio, they can participate in the campaign. They have to be a permanent employee. Mm -hmm. They're not, and she's saying, um, Brenda, I'm sorry, Brenda is saying that interns aren't on a set schedule. 
However, they're still able to participate via one-time ca cash or check. If they, if they say, okay, I really want to support my charity of choice because I, I want to write a check and fill out a pledge card, then by all means, don't discount those individuals. Don't discount those individuals. Does that answer your question? I would say identify all of the employees that are on the state payroll. And that's, that's information you can get from your HR department. That's information you can get from like HR or whomever handles payroll. I would identify everybody that's on state payroll. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would, I would talk to HR, and they, they probably have a definition for that. Um, I would say anyone that's on state payroll. Because would seasonal employees be on state payroll? Okay. I would talk to HR. Brenda, would that be the best advice to talk to HR and get that information? Okay. Any more questions about Section 2 on the report envelope? Yes. Yes, it could, it could. Um, I would maybe check with your HR before you submit your envelopes to your campaign liaison just to make sure you have an accurate. It may never change, but it could change. You said it definitely will. <laughs> Larger agencies will change, yeah. Okay, so in terms of section three, these are your one-time contributions that are either donor checks or donor cash that we have converted to a check. All cash must be converted to a check, even if that donor gave you a pledge card with $20 tied to it, you are responsible for getting those cash pledges converted to a check. So in this case, we have one donor check for $25, that's fine. Um, we didn't have any cash in this case, um, but again, all cash has to be converted to a check. And we have a relationship with Fifth Third Bank, or if you have a relationship with your bank, where you can actually go in, we have a letter that you can take, it's in your coordinator manual, that you can actually take in and get any cash converted to a check for free. They only allow you one check per day, um, so you may have to go stagger it and get convert your cash pledges to a check, and then convert your special events dollars to a check. But we do have that relationship for that purpose, and it's free. You want to make sure you have your ID, and you want to make sure you have that letter. Or, if you, again, if you have a relationship with your personal bank, they may allow you to do that same thing also, and they may allow you two checks per day. Um, and so then we have our payroll pledges. In this case, we have 13. And you want to enter the annual gift here. The annual gift. So you want to look through all those 13 pledge cards, and you don't, you don't want the per pay, you want the annual, and that totals what you're going to put in that, in that spot. In this case, they had a Coney sale, they raised $25. Then we're just going to total those out. Any questions on that? That's pretty cut and clear. Any questions? Um, we have, for auditing purposes, we have to have the coordinator's signature. We like to see your title. You want you to print your name, phone number, envelope picked up. Your, when you, when you want to definitely make time for your campaign liaison to come out and audit the envelope with you. So that's a schedule you're going to have to set up with your liaison. Um, they're going to want to come out and sit down with you and go through the envelopes. Um, and they'll sign off on it. They're going to take, they're going to give you the top copy, and they're going to take the envelope and the second copy. Any questions on the report envelope? So Tammy, oh, go ahead. As often as you like, it depends on the schedule you set up with your um, liaison. 
Any other questions? Okay, Tammy is a season coordinator as well as a steering committee member. She's going to talk to you about campaign strategies. You guys had a lot of information thrown at you. Your heads might be swimming. You might be a little overwhelmed. So what I'd like to do is just take a minute and have everybody stand up, please. There might be times during the campaign where you feel exactly the way you do right now. You may get a little distracted. You might forget why you're doing this, you might feel overwhelmed, you may feel like you'll never reach your goal. So I just want to ask you a few questions, and if what I say applies to you, go ahead and have a seat. Do you know anyone who's ever received services from Meals on Wheels? Do you enjoy fishing or hiking? Have you ever been to Kosai? That took care of everyone, and I didn't even get to a child who might have a final wish, or unfortunately, someone we know who has cancer. These are the reasons why we're here. These are the reasons why we do this. So good morning. My name is Tammy Leonard. I work at the Re Rehabilitation Services Commission. I have led my campaign um, at my agency for a few years, and then I had the pleasure of being a loaned employee, which is what they used to be called before they were um, liaisons. About 11 years ago, I was sitting where you are now, except I didn't get the benefit of a new coordinator training. Um, I've been on the state steering committee for several years, and I just want to say, don't be afraid to ask questions, not only at the question and answer that we have coming up after I'm done, but especially with the season coordinators that are going to be at the end of your next training. You're going to get a lot of information from them. But for right now, I'd like to share some strategies with you that have worked for me and that I've seen work at other agencies. Number one to me, um, one of the most important things I've seen make or break a campaign is securing your director's um, support. Take some time to meet with them. If you aren't sure where they stand on the campaign, just have a chat with them. It's great to have their support. I've seen a tremendous difference at agencies where the director is supportive and directly involved in the campaign. They've mentioned already that you want to make sure you recruit your team. Based on your agency's size and how many offices you may have around the state, it's important that you make sure everyone feels involved. So if you have agencies in Summit County, make sure someone out there is going to be in communication with those people, collect the pledge cards. Um, we all have you know, maybe new employees, old employees, and I'm not saying young or old. I'm saying people who are new to the agency, people who have been there for a long time. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a good representation of union and management. The reason you want to have a good mix on your team is because they're going to have friends and people that they communicate with in their circle in a lot of different places. So you want to make sure that you're able to reach everyone and that people have someone to relate to, someone they may be able to identify with. Use your resources. I don't mean the great stuff that you're getting today. Of course you're going to use that. But I'm talking about the wonderful people that are available to you. Don't forget about your liaisons. The people at um, United Way, our um, organization that helps with the campaign, and the federations. They're always willing to help train your team, speak at meetings, and um, get, people, get people going. About um, halfway through one of my campaigns, my team was tired. And they just they didn't seem like they were excited anymore. They'd kind of lost their focus. So I had one of the federations come out and speak to them just for a few minutes, and it really energized them for the rest of the campaign and helped us have a great time. One of the things that I did um, at my agency the last year I ran a campaign is I changed the goal to a participation goal. Of course, you have your monetary goal, but if you focus on participation, the money's going to be there. So um, last year, our director offered um, Team Fridays, which was a way for us to increase last year. He said anyone who gave $5 per pay within the first two weeks of the campaign was able to wear a team jersey, t-shirt, or sweatshirt through the end of March, um, which was very generous. We're, we're allowed to wear uh, jeans on Fridays, but we're not allowed to wear t-shirts or anything. We were all kind of bummed because it was a new dress code, and we wanted to wear Ohio State stuff or Michigan stuff or, you know, whatever. 
So um, we enjoyed this incentive. It helped us increase our participation and our per capita because people who normally gave one or two dollars a pay went ahead and increased to the five dollars per pay so they could enjoy wearing their gear. A great thing uh, for you is to plan a kickoff event. We raise more money in that one day than we do the rest of the campaign. If you can, invite the um, federations through your liaisons to come out. Have fun. See if you can have games. Talk to your director. See what he'll let you do. Our director speaks. Um, we have musicians at our agency, and they come out and they play during our kickoff. Helps bring people out. They have a great time. One of the things that are available to you are gifts from the CCO. You can um, call Janine or Tamara and I request, say, 20 gifts, and then say the first 20 people who come to our kickoff and turn in a pledge card will get a surprise. I did that at the, um, the Department of Education when I worked with them. They had a great kickoff. You want to make sure that you utilize the posters and the, um, send emails if you can. Don't be crazy with the emails because people will just start deleting them. But one thing I like to do is to make people think. I like to use quotes when I talk about the campaign. One of the things I used to put on my posters was that no one makes a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. I saw that quote by Edmund Burke at the zoo. You never know where you're going to see a quote that inspires you. One place you can look is Quoteland.com if that's something that you're interested in doing. Another great thing that we used to use are did you know facts. There are great facts that are in the manual, but there are also things you may learn today that you didn't know that you want to share with people. So a quick did you know. Did you know that every year you have to turn in a pledge card? It doesn't carry over from the year before. Some people don't know that, so it's helpful information. You'll want to plan a calendar. There are options. You can run your campaign the entire length from September 5th to October 19th. Or you can have a blitz, which is a real quick campaign. Depends on what works for you. There's information about the blitz in your manual. One of the things I like are events. Some agencies don't do them. But I think that events help keep it fresh in everyone's mind without you having to say CCC, CCC, CCC. They see an event. It's fun. One thing you can do is tie your pledge cards to your events. You can say, instead of $5 to participate in this pumpkin, pumpkin carving contest, Turn in your pledge card and you can enter your pumpkin for free. You're going to get a lot more than a $5 one-time donation for a pledge or for the pumpkin carving if they turn in a pledge card. Even a dollar per pay is $26 to participate. Don't be a procrastinator. I'm a horrible procrastinator, but when it comes to CCC, it's a good idea to meet with your li liaison on a regular basis. Make sure you get your leadership and tracking forms in on a regular basis. And don't wait until the end. It just causes unnecessary stress, and nobody needs any more of that. And finally, you just want to make sure that you say thank you. Whether you're able to have an event, or it's just an email, or you turn over your posters and let everyone know how you did. And, it, and thank you is so important to everyone who donates. Even those who want to be anonymous just want to know whether you reached your goal. And they like to feel that they're appreciated. So I just want to close with saying that 11 years ago, I said I was sitting where you are now. And 11 years ago, I found a passion that changed my life. And this year, I hope you do too. Thank you. Um, Tammy talked about promoting the campaign and marketing for the campaign. Um, and I kind of um, wanted to give you a break from listening to my voice. So, um, Kind of going back to the campaign report envelopes, there is a special events envelope. We talked about special events dollars. There's a special event envelope that you can actually put in the campaign report envelope. You don't have to use it. It's just kind of a courtesy for you. But in terms of promoting the campaign, this is our 2012 campaign poster, and this is what the front of our guide is going to look like. Very different from in the past. It definitely um, it kind of coincides with the video. Um, but this is what you're going to use. These are the posters you're going to hang up across um, your facility, throughout your facility, common areas, break rooms, where people kind of frequent to promote the campaign. Um, you'll be getting your campaign supplies after August 14th. After August 14th. At least these posters, definitely. Hopefully all of your supplies. You want to start hanging these up. Campaign kickoff is September 5th. 
So you want to start hanging these up so that the employees in your agency start getting used to all of the excitement surrounding the campaign. This is the reverse side of that poster. So you have your, your a promotion, your marketing, you have that poster. After the campaign is done, you, have, you can flip this poster over and keep it in those break rooms, keep it in those same common areas. How much did you raise, agency total, and the overall campaign total. So you can communicate that information as well. This is your thermometer poster. As the coordinator, you're responsible for keeping this updated. So your goal, you would put that there. Again, these posters go in common areas and break rooms. You would put your goal, and if your goal is $1,000 and you're at $500, you're responsible for making sure that's filled up to 50%. You want to make sure that everyone in the agency is kept abreast of where you are in terms of reaching your goal. Very important. And this is something you want to communicate to your director as well. I don't know if, if, you, if your director is your, if you report directly there or if your supervisor reports directly to your director, but you definitely want to keep this information um, with senior leadership. They should definitely know how the campaign is going because, again, at the end of the campaign, we put, our, put out our annual reports. This information is made public, and I don't want any of you to have your directors blindsided like, well, I thought we were at 100%. What happened? Or I thought we were at one point, and why weren't we? So at this point, um, we are going to open it up for any questions. Any questions about anything we've gone over? Yes. The question is, is it possible to get the thermometer um, image electronically? Yes. Um, if you, um, during the break, which we're getting ready to take here in a minute or so, um, if you want to get with your campaign liaison, make sure they know what, they, what agency you're with or get with Janine Tool. We can definitely get that information to you um, because you may want to put that up on your intranet. I know for some of our campaigns, they scroll it on the marquee. Any other questions? All righty, so we're going to take about a 15-minute break, and then we'll come back. Don't forget, we have the federations out there. Um, they're actually going to come in at the second half of the training and talk to you about their individual um, organizational mission. Um, but feel free to talk to them. They have goodies. If you haven't already seen them, they have goodies and trinkets and candy and stuff. Thank you.